Hi my sweeties, it's me again, your favorite crazy person in this entire universe. And today I'm wide awake and I won't talk like somebody who is about to fall asleep. I have some things to say that are quite important because I believe now information is more distorted than ever and we have to be careful what we allow into our minds. We should not give in to conspiracy theories. We should not trust the wrong people regarding news stories and also health information. From my own observation, how you learn the best, what is right for you in your life, you have to watch the people around you. This is how I make decisions on what I trust, what kind of information I trust. You have to become smart yourself. You should not only read stories and articles, press releases, magazines, or listen to YouTube videos, you know, watch YouTube videos or, or believe people who are claiming certain facts to be true. When you have never seen any evidence in real life, we have to stop to live in this parallel universe called the internet and we have to open our eyes to the real world. So the way I learn, the way I decide which opinions I, I allow to influence me is by having my own experiences. And I don't know why, but I think I learned that from a very young age that lessons that were taught to me in school and by society and also on TV, stories I watched on TV, they didn't quite match up with my experiences in real life. So this is when I started questioning the whole system and what kind of messages are being sent to us. I cannot quite recall which experience triggered this type of behavior and how it manifested in my life. But there have, I think there have been several experiences and I believe that it started around age 15 when I noticed that media stories didn't, didn't make sense. A lot, of, a lot of stuff that we are being told is not quite the same in reality when you experience it firsthand. So I, I really stuck with this belief system and I began to try things that were condemned. And when people had like terrible opinions about something, I became interested to dig more into it and to see what is this really about? And I'm still the same today. If there's some controversy regarding an institution or a certain topic, I am immediately compelled to research and to find out firsthand what this is all about. Because more than once I have experienced the opposite to be true compared to what you read in magazines or see inside the media. And this is why I am encouraging you to start now to learn from your own life experiences only. Considering health, I have a very good example. If you look at the people in your environment, you will have to decide what kind of information you allow in regarding health. By watching people who are the healthiest in your environment and you have to approach exactly those people and you have to ask them what they do and how they live their lives. Personally, I can watch something very interesting inside my own family. 
My father, for example, is the healthiest person in my family. He also looks about 20 years younger than his actual age. I will not say his actual age here, but you can do the math later on. I don't believe in using the word old or telling yourself you're old no matter what age you are. This is how you program your own cells to age faster, so I would not recommend this to you. Furthermore, I would recommend to you not to give in to any kind of aging system and to always see yourself as young as possible and to think of yourself as a young person. I am 25 years old for life. I'm 25 X, A, B, D, C, H, A, C. <laughs> I will not allow the system to get into my head with their ideas of what a certain age has to act like or behave like or even how your body is supposed to, to become at a certain age. So my father now is at an age where most people can't function normally anymore. They don't work, they don't have fun, a lot of them already passed away. <laughs> That's not funny. So he looks like he's about 55. That is what most people claim. He has a good life, he has no health problems at all. Most people are quite amazed at the type of life he lives and how he carries himself. I don't know if he's happy. People these days are not really happy anymore, but I think he's definitely content with his life. And he looks amazingly healthy. So I look at my father and compare how he lives his life and what he does also regarding my siblings or my mother because they are not that healthy at all and my mother is 10 years younger than my father she also got the v my father did not get the v my father has always been opposing v's and my mother actually as well but somehow she still fell for this agenda so I always ask my father for advice regarding health and I look at him, what he does, how he lives his life, what kind of supplements he takes. And this is how I can learn what works because I see it right in front of me. My father has been quite obsessed with his health and he has been taking a lot of supplements for all his life. My mother used to make fun of him a lot because of this. Finally, she began to realize that she was wrong and she also started to ask him for advice more often. My mother eats way more animal products than my father and she smoked when she was younger. My dad, in comparison, focused on a vegetarian lifestyle. He eats everything. He doesn't avoid meat. He's not a vegan at all, but he focuses on very natural healthy foods no processed foods and he cooks a lot this is what i mean this is how you can learn what makes sense in life and you have to start to do that you cannot trust outside information in this world i mean you can to some extent of course but you know what i mean you have to be you have to question everything you have to question people you have to question people's in intentions and you have to watch closely who does, because actions speak, speak louder than words, who does exactly what they say and who's just boasting and who's just pretending, who's putting people down, who's, who's angry and who's unhappy in their life and who actually then to, to uh, compare in comparison to that, who is actually happy and who feels that they had a good life? What do they do? How do they live? And from what I have seen, the Muslim cultures, the cult, but I'm not saying Dubai. We have to see here. <laughs> Dubai is a completely different thing. So if you want to go to a Muslim culture country, don't go to Dubai. But the very religious Muslim culture countries they tend to have the highest rate in happiness and 
people who are truly satisfied and content with their lives. So you just have to look, what do these people do? And I have to say here, the media is promoting such a distorted view regarding Muslim culture. So we have to be very, very careful here. That's also what I do. I don't trust stories about different cultures. I usually go to this place. I talk to the people. I want to know their tradition. I also, I always adjust to the traditional foods when I move to a different country because I want to experience the energy and the culture and to know how these people think and what they do differently. This is why I also went to the Middle East and to Asia. When I saw 2016, 2017, I noticed something is wrong with Western society. I could not get rid of this feeling that something is happening which is terribly, terribly evil. This is why I traveled a lot. I looked into Asian culture and I looked into Middle Eastern culture and Australian culture. I also spent time in Australia. And I saw that, I experienced that Middle Eastern citizens are the happiest. That's what I know to be true because I've spoken to these people, I know how they think, and women are not oppressed there at all. Like, you know, <laughs> there were some, some things I saw that were saddening, but they were not as, they were not the majority and not as uh, normal as people are being told inside the media here. This alone is quite disturbing. So this is my personal way how I decide what to think about different cultures and what I believe. This is the most reliable source. You can't go wrong with that. So this is the best way to decide on what to form your own opinions. You really need to experience things for yourself firsthand and you have to watch closely who walks the talk and who is just boasting. So to go back to my father just one more time, as I said before, my father takes plenty of supplements. He walks a lot in the forest, in the mountains. He also drinks a lot of water directly from the well in the mountains. But it works, you know, it works. He takes a lot of vitamin C, B vitamins. And I would recommend to you to stick to four different vitamins. It's vitamin D, vitamin C in high doses and also B vitamins. And then to take some, some kind of amino acids and a very good probiotic. Let's say if you can afford it, take as many as possible. And I don't believe that vegan is the right way to go. This is your decision. Personally, I see that some kind of animal products from time to time, they can benefit the system and your health, especially beef and red meat, opposed to what conventional media is telling. Honestly, I would love to be a vegan. I'm an animal supporter. I love animals and I don't, I'm completely against animal torture. I, I don't support any kind of suffering in this universe. And still, for some reason, I can't because especially beef and like eggs, milk, it makes me feel much better. It improves my mood. And I have a tendency to melancholy sometimes. I'm not depressed or anything. I had it from maybe age six. I know I'm an, I have an artistic or creative brain, but I also have an entrepreneur <laughs> mindset in many ways. So, but I know that I'm sensitive to mood swings and usually meat uh, sta stabilizes my mood and makes me very happy and content and relaxed and peaceful. So that's the reason why I can't give up meat and animal products. 
But I would love to if there is a way, if I can find a way to to eat something else and have the same effect, uh, I would definitely become a vegan. Meat, especially beef, has also been proven to support, like help people who who deal with mental health issues like schizophrenia, psychosis. I never dealt with any of these things, never in my life. But I also don't want to. <laughs> so, <laughs> I mean, you never know if your thoughts are... <laughs> If your ideas and thoughts are 100% true, if you're crazy, you will probably not know it. Ah, I shouldn't have made this joke because now some people will come up with stupid assumptions and that's how, that's how humanity is these days. Anyway, that's not why, but still I think meat can improve your mental health, can stabilize you and give you a lot of energy. So to come to an end, this is how you have to learn. You have to learn from people around you in your environment and you have to ask them. You have to get mentorships with everything that you need to know. You have to watch people and see who thrives in certain areas and what, what do they do and ask them. Ask them questions. Watch them, how they live their lives. And I, I don't mean the fake life on Instagram or on on YouTube because people fake so many things. You cannot, you don't know what these people are really like. You have to learn from people who live in your environment, in the real world. You have to watch them. You have to talk to them. Stop being a follower of the false universe, the parallel universe which is the internet and the media, that's not the reality. You have to start living in reality again. And that's how you create opinion. That's how you have to create opinions. And that's how you know the truth. That's the only way to know the truth. By talking to people who are with you, who you can judge because you know if they're lying, if they pretend to be someone they're not. And then you have to learn from the right people in your environment. That's the only way to know what is true and what isn't, because too many people rely on false information that is being misrepresented inside the internet by people who are not who they pretend to be. And you go down a very dangerous path with this type of thinking. That was my recommendation to you. <laughs> I hope I could help you a little bit. I'm sending you a big kiss and I hope to see you soon. Or here.